I'm so excited that you've joined me for this journey because we're gonna talk about two questions that can grow you and me, can grow the roles that we have in our lives, can grow even our businesses or organizations and career. But most of all, I wanna start with how these two questions can grow you. And so I wanna walk you through these two questions, challenge you on how to answer these, and I think what you're gonna discover is as we go through this journey together, these two questions are gonna be an extraordinary gift, not only to you, but to the people in your life and the people in my life. So here are the two questions from the very beginning. Question number one, what do you want to be known for? What do you wanna be known for? I mean, you've got this extraordinary gift, I've got this extraordinary gift called a life. What do we want to be known for? What do you wanna be known for in the roles and responsibilities of your life? What, what kind of spouse or what kind of father and mother or what kind of friend, what kind of leader, what kind of employee, what are the roles that you have in your life, what do you want to be known for? Now, that's question number one. That's your question to answer. Question number two is the challenging one. And that is, what are you known for? What are you known for? Now, this question is the question for the people in our lives. This is the question for our spouse or our kids or our employees or employers, our friends, our family. This is the question that they get to answer. And here's the power of these two questions. When the answers to these two questions match, when what you want to be known for is what you're known for, guess what happens? We grow, we become the people God is calling us to be. That's the power, that's the simplicity, that's the challenge of these two questions. And so in this journey, what we're gonna discover is how these two questions can grow us personally in the personal responsibilities in our lives, but we're also going to discover how these two questions can impact our businesses, our churches, our organizations that we give our lives to. But before we get there, I wanna share with you how these two questions have impacted me personally. And I wanna share with you a couple of ways of how I've answered these two questions to give you some examples of how you might wanna answer these two questions yourself. So let's go back to question number one. What do I wanna be known for? Well, there's a couple of ways that I specifically answer those. The first one is I wanna be known for being for the person in front of me. Whoever is currently in front of me, I wanna be for that person. So right now, that, that's you. And my hope and my prayer is that you would experience that, that in, as we go through this journey together, you would say that Jeff is for me by giving me some helpful content. But this morning, I was in front of a coffee barista. I wanted her to know I was for her. The incredible men that are filming this, this video series, I want them to know that I am for them. And that's a challenge for me because I go, like you, we go to a lot of different places all throughout the day. Whoever is in front of me, I want that person to have my full attention and that they would walk away and go, that guy was for me. Now, the other answer to that question for me, and there are many others, but I'm just giving you two, comes from a passage in the book of Luke. In Luke chapter 18, verse eight, Jesus says, when I return to the earth, will I find faith? That question has always bothered me in a really good way. And the way I answer that, and the way I answer this question is, what do I wanna be known for? I wanna be known to be found faithful. So if Jesus comes back today and walks up to me, I want him to look at the roles and responsibilities I have in my life, and I want him to say, Jeff, I find you faithful as a husband. Jeff, I find you being faithful in the role I've given you as a dad. Jeff, I found you faithful as the role I've given you as a pastor. I found you faithful in the financial decisions that you make. And that's a challenging, challenging thing, but Every single day, I get to wake up and say, this is what I want to be known for. And so these two questions for me have allowed me to kind of have an anchor. And as the busyness and the chaos of life comes our way and my way, it's an anchor to go, okay, today I have an opportunity to be for the person in front of me, whoever that may be, and these roles and responsibilities in my life, I want to be found faithful. But ultimately, do you know who gives me feedback on whether there's a gap there? It's the people in my life. And here's the good news for us and the reality for us, and none of us are perfect. So you've probably got a vision and I hope you have a vision of what you wanna be known for. If not, 
welcome to this journey. We're gonna figure this out together, okay? We're gonna provide you and give you some ways to answer this question. And if you wanna take my answers, cool, but I would love for you to come up with some of your own. But here's the reality, there's a gap. There's a gap between what I wanna be known for and what I am known for. And so I want this life, my heavenly Father, my Savior to grow me up so that we shrink the gap together. And that's how this works for you. Now, the cool news is, if you have no gaps and you're incredibly perfect, no issues, you have my permission to not watch the rest of the series. As for the rest of us, those of us who have issues like me, there's a gap there. So what we're gonna do in this series is try to figure out how do we close the gap between what we wanna be known for and what we are known for, okay? Now, that, just that in and of itself is an incredible opportunity, I think, for you and me personally in terms of what's in it for me as it relates to this video journey and this video series. But here's the cool news about these questions. This is so great that these two questions aren't just for us personally, they actually can grow our businesses, our churches, our organizations. For example, let's look at it from a business standpoint, if, if we can. And growing up, I, I was a preacher's kid and um, I grew up in church. I promised myself I would never ever work at a church. So I've been working at a church for 16 years now. So that's a whole other story. But I, I, I developed an interest in sports and marketing and did sports marketing for the Atlanta Braves and Chick-fil-A and loved it. But eventually left uh, 16 years ago to help launch three churches in the Atlanta area for North Point Ministries. And I discovered something about growth. And I worked for thriving organizations that are growing and I worked for thriving org uh, churches. And I thought, I think they're applying these two questions. So I wanna share with you how these two questions can grow a business or a church. Now certainly, businesses need to have great products, but there are businesses that have good products that don't grow. Churches, you gotta pray, but there are churches that pray that don't grow. So let me tell you these two questions and why these two questions are important, not just for us personally, but for our businesses, churches, and organizations. Question number one, what does your business wanna be known for? What does your organization want to be known for? This is uh, what Steve Jobs would say is our dent in the universe, our unique niche. What do you want to be known for? And then the second question is the customer's reflection back on that on that vision or whatever you wanna be known for. Because what are you known for is the customer's reflection back to you. And here's the power of these two questions. When what you wanna be known for is what you're known for, then your customers experience your vision and they tell other people about them. They tell other people about you. When your customers experience what you wanna be known for and they experience your vision, what happens is, is they tell other people about them. And when that happens, you create a sales force for free. You harness the power of positive word of mouth advertising. It's true for businesses, true for organizations, and true for churches. In fact, let me give you an example of how this worked at our church here in Gwinnett County. In 2011, we started Gwinnett Church, which is where I'm filming this. It's located in a northern suburb of Atlanta and is a campus of North Point Ministries. In the very early days of the church, before there were even Sunday services, before we even had a name of a church, we did the exact same thing I'm asking you to do. We began with these two questions. And since we weren't up and running yet, we, we asked these questions from a global perspective. What do you want the church to be known for? And what is the church known for? Again, here's the power of these two questions. Now at the time, there were only five of us on staff and we were trying to start this church. It was a great discussion, but there was a comment that stopped all of us. And here's what someone in that group said. And this was a powerful moment for me. They said, well, many people are more familiar with what the church is against rather than what the church is for. We should be known for what we're for. And we all just kind of looked at each other for a moment. And we asked this question, how'd we get here? How did we get to this point globally as a church? How did the most inclusive message, how did the most loving message, how did the greatest message the world has ever known been turned upside down to the point that many people are more familiar with what the church is against rather than what the church is for? Now, here's the deal. I, I know the church isn't a business, but if we can put it in business terminology, we would say that the church has a brand 
image problem. But it doesn't have to be that way. You and I, we can change this. Not only can we change this, we must change this. It's why in our context as the Gwinnett Church staff, we began to brainstorm answers to the question, hey, 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 what do we want to be known for? And when we asked that question, the answers began to flow. We're for Gwinnett families. We're for Gwinnett students. We're for Gwinnett businesses. We're for Gwinnett adults. We're for the people in this county because God is for them. And that's been our message ever since. But not only that, it's been incredibly encouraging to see so many other churches around the world jump in and begin to share the very same message with their communities. By doing so, we are trying to reach people who have said no to church. And something powerful happens when people who've said no to church realize the church is still saying yes to them. Now, in the early days of our church, I had an artist draw this illustration of a man on a couch with his back to the church. This man didn't just represent men, he represented families, he represented adults and students who had no interest in church. I told our staff that our challenge is to shrink the gap and give him a reason to turn around and consider our church. To do that, we have to be inclusive in our messaging. We have to include him, we have to think about him, we have to show him that we have more in common with him than he and they might think. So practically speaking, what, what does that look like? Well, when we purchased the property that I'm on, our first location, and we started the construction process, the city where we're located said we could put up a sign that said, Gwinnett Church, coming soon with the date. But that's exactly what I did not want to do, at least not in our introduction to the community. Instead, we created a sign that talked about what we wanted to be known for, which is what I'm asking you to do. We had this guy on the couch in mind, and what we wanted to do is we wanted to have a message that could include him as he drove by the property on his way to work. So, instead of saying Gwinnett Church coming soon, we put up this sign. It simply said, hashtag for Gwinnett. And understandably, there were a few people who were quite puzzled by this. And I was asked, how are they going to know that this is a church that's being built? And I responded, exactly. I want there to be some mystery. I want them to ha have to figure this out. I want them to ask, what does that for Gwinnett mean? Then we gave our volunteers t-shirts that said for Gwinnett and asked them to wear it around town, to the grocery store, to the parks, to the restaurants. But to be ready when people ask them, what, what does that for Gwinnett sign mean? What does your t-shirt mean? And this is really important for your business, church, organization. Because vision's like a bucket of water. The more words in the bucket, the more the vision spills out. So one of my favorite stories comes from Kim, one of our volunteers here at Gwinnett Church. She, she wears her Four Gwinnett t-shirt into the grocery store one day, and a man in front of her in the line says, Four Gwinnett. There's a big sign up there on the property on the road. And he said, what's it going to be? Why does it say Four Gwinnett? And Kim responded, it's going to be a church. And he said, a church? Well, then why does it say Fort Gwinnett? And then whatever she says next is gold, all right? And this is true for your organization. What are people saying about your organization? And in this moment, Kim said, in the line at the grocery store, well, many people are more familiar with what the church is against rather than what the church is for. We want to be known for who we're for, and we're actually for you. And <laughs> to which he responded, do you have a card? And this example illustrates where we began here. Kim was part of the sales force for free, people who were communicating the vision of our church, which helped grow our church. This is an important point for churches and businesses, because the more vision carriers you have, the more vision casters you have. And in the grocery store that night, Kim was both a vision carrier and a vision caster. It's why, knowing what and who you're for and being able to communicate it is such an important value and lesson for any organization. But it's even bigger than that. Here's what I wanna challenge you to be a part of. In a hypercritical, cynical world that often is known for what it's against, 
Let's be a group of people known for who and what we're for. It's true in our businesses, it's true in our organizations, our churches, but as I began, these two questions that we're gonna look at, it's actually gonna help you grow as a person. So in this journey, we're going to discover who and what God is for. We're going to discover how these two questions can impact our businesses, our churches, our organizations, and we're going to discover how this can grow you, your career, and your personal life. If this sounds like something you wanna be a part of, and I think it does because you're watching this, then on behalf of hundreds of other people in communities around the world who are wanting to be known for who and what we're for, welcome to the journey. We've got some work to do.